This is the type of code that I enjoy to read, but how can we do it? That's exactly what we'll see in this video. And by the end, I will show you something a bit more obscure, but extremely useful that we can do with this approach. Have you already noticed how you configure things like open telemetry or as another example how pleasant it is to build the link query both of them have something in common they use the fluent build pattern the fluent build pattern is a creational pattern to simplify the creation of complex objects and is super useful when for example you have an object that is hard to build for example, if you have multiple constructors, depending on the scenario that you are trying to build. Or another good use case for it is, for example, if you are building a report or a CSV export, something like that, that you are building an object that then will be exported. Or my favorite scenario is when you want to build objects for testing in your range step of your tests, you can use this pattern as well to simplify the life of those writing the tests. Why? Because basically you are building an expressive way to reduce the mental overload of those trying to build that object that is a bit complex. Let's use this movies class as an example. To create a new movie object that would mean code like this. It's not a huge problem, but we can do better. Oh, let's now take a look with that approach of the Fluent Builder. For that, we'll need a Builder class for that movie. How can we create one? What we'll first do is to create private fields for all the properties that we want to set. So the title, release on, gender, or actors. Then we'll create several methods on this movie builder that will be something like this. You will have a method that will be with title, and the with title will receive a title and return the builder itself. So we return this. Then we move forward and do exactly the same thing to the other ones. So release done, gender, the actors. This is one of the approaches that you can do with actors. We'll see another one. And finally, you will add a build method. And that build method, one that will now return the movie itself, because we'll create a new movie based on the information that we set before. Now that you have that, now we can create a movie in a different way. Now, instead of creating a new movie using the new constructor and then setting all the properties, we can use those methods on the movie builder. So we'll say with title released on a given date, gender, call the with actor as many times as we want, providing the information of the actor. And finally, we do the build and that will give you the property of the type movie. So you can see that this one reads so much better than the other one, but even then we can improve it. But first let's discuss an important thing that is the naming conventions that we usually use with this builder pattern. So you will commonly see two to three different approaches. One of them is when we use something like the prefix with on everything. Like we have the with title, we'll have something like with release dot. I prefer to name those methods in a way that is easy to read. So when you are reading it, it makes a lot of sense. For example, if I say released on a given date is more expressive than saying with release date or with gender, because I can say of gender. So usually you will find those two approaches. I prefer this one where the method says what we are doing to that object. The other important thing is that you might see the builder being implemented in two different ways in terms of the constructor of the builder itself. For example, here we are creating a new movie builder when we want to create a new movie. Another way to do this is to expose a static method that will be something like I want an empty movie builder that will return the movie builder itself. That means that now your constructor needs to be private. So when you need to create a new movie, you will say movie builder dot empty with title release done, something like that. This approach can be quite interesting, especially when you are talking about tests, because when you are talking about tests, it might make a lot of sense to have something like this. You would say instead of empty, you would say something like 
default and that could mean that the default already had some properties in place. When we are talking about tests, it's common to use the same object in multiple places and then just change it slightly based on the thing that we want to test on that moment. So that's another interesting approach. So something like this, that would mean that when I'm creating a new builder, instead of using the empty, I could use the default. So those are different approaches. But now let's take this one step further. And that step further is based on the fact that we have nesting here. So our movie has a list of actors. So you can see here that we were creating a list of actors. So what if we have a builder inside of a building? We can do that as well. So let's create a public class that will be an actor builder. And there, let's do exactly the same idea. So let's say that our actor builder is something like this. We have a create method to create the builder itself. Then we have the with first name, with surname, and the born in regarding the birth year. So this is one of those cases where you can clearly see the benefit of saying born in a given year instead of saying with birth year. Okay. It's more expressive this way. So now we have the, the build that will return the actor. But now we need to put those things together. So now that means that inside of our test, instead of defining here that we want this new actor, what we'll do is that we'll say that we have an actor builder, first name Keanu, surname Reeves, born in 1964 built and we can do exactly the same to the other one but even then i'm not happy with this i don't want to define with actor actor builder dot create okay i want to be implicit that if i'm saying that this is an actor i'm defining an actor i don't need the actor builder again so the builder should be there already and how can we do that if we go back into our movie builder this time what we do instead is that we define a new actor, but we provide an action of the type action builder. With that builder, we could rename it here to options, for example, as it's common to do. Then we can create a new actor, provide that to that action that someone is giving us access. Then we'll add that actor to the list. So that means that we can throw away this one. And now we go back to our tests and adding an actor can be something like this without the build. And you can see that we improved a lot this source code. But you might be thinking, what if I have something like properties that are required and another ones that are not? Can I do something on this fluent builder to guide the consumer of this source code to set the properties that need to be set before building the object? The answer is yes. And this is the dark magic thing that I mentioned at the beginning, because I want you to take this in consideration. Why? Because I, I don't want you using this everywhere, because this can be hard to maintain. But in some cases, it might be useful. Let me show you how you can do that. Let's use the example of building an actor. We could say that at least the actor needs to have the first name and the surname. And let's say that birth year would be optional. Okay. To do that, let me do the following. I will duplicate the actor builder and I will name it actor guided builder. And that actor guided builder will work slightly different. So the way that it will work is I will provide a set of steps. So each step will unblock next actions. By doing so, I can guarantee that the last thing that you can do is calling the build. So the way that we'll do is that I will have this actor guided builder that when I create a new one, I will give access to the actor guided builder step one. Don't worry for now with the structure of this code. This actor guided builder step one is the thing that will return first. And that one needs to have the with first name. Then this one, instead of setting the first name, what we'll do, pay attention, is that we'll return another builder, the step two, that will receive the first name. So that means that now we duplicate this class, we have the step two, and there, what we'll have is the with surname, 
The width surname goes here, but also we need to have a constructor that will receive the first name. But when I have the surname, now I have all the required properties and I can take you to the next step where you can define the optional properties, right? So what I will do is that I will return another third step to be the step three. The step three needs to receive the first name and the surname. So it means that when I use the with surname on step two, what I will do is return in the actor builder step three with the first name and with the surname. So now that I'm on three, I have the first name, I have the surname, I can set the birth here and now I can bring here the build. So throw this away, grab the build and add it to the step three. So that means that the private properties of the actor guided builder itself are not needed anymore. And we have three steps inside. And now do you use this? Let me show you. If you are creating an actor with a guided builder, what you would do is that I would say actor guided builder. Now I would say, please create a new one. And now you can see that I only have access to the first name. So if I want to create an actor without the surname, I can't. So I will do first name and that will unblock the surname. So now I'm forced to define the surname and only then the born in or the build are unlocked. So I could now call the build without setting an optional property. So once again, I don't recommend to do this everywhere. However, in my career, I had a few cases where this was quite useful. For example, building reports where setting some properties in the beginning were required and we want to provide the best user experience for our clients. However, it brings a cost to us as the developers to maintain this source code because as you have seen, it becomes quite tricky. And if you find this video interesting, make sure you watch this video right here because there I will show you how to put this technique in practice to improve the arrange step of your tests.